The Insta360 X4 is the best 360 camera you can buy right now. But is it also the best action camera? To find out, I compared it to the GoPro Hero 12 and the DJI Action 4, two of the most popular action cameras. A comparison with the Insta360 Ace Pro will follow soon. Today, we take a look at the 15 most important categories, such as image quality, overheating or software features. You will see that the X4 has clear advantages over the Hero 12 or the Action 4 in some areas, but also a few disadvantages in others. At the end, I will tell you who would I recommend the X4 to and who would I rather recommend the Hero 12 or the Action 4 to. The big advantage of the X4 compared to a traditional action camera is that you can choose the optimal framing in post. This is a general advantage of all 360 cameras. With previous 360 cameras, however, the reframed clip had a reduced resolution, which of course had a negative effect on the image quality. For this reason alone, in the past, many people preferred a traditional action camera. This has now changed. The X4 takes higher resolution 360 videos in 8K. This means that 4K shots are taken with both lenses and merged together to create an 8K 360 image. The decisive advantage is that you can now select the perfect framing in post and then export a higher resolution clip from it. In the default settings, the export is done in 4K, but the real resolution is closer to 2.7K. As you can see here, the reframe clip in any case looks very detailed and sharp. It is therefore not necessary to set the perfect framing already when shooting. And in the case of action cameras, which are often mounted in unusual places, this is a huge advantage. Especially if you are filming yourself, it is not always possible to set the optimum framing during recording. With the X4, you can even dynamically adjust and change the framing during the clip, which gives you completely new creative possibilities. And as you can see here, the 8K footage from the X4 looks excellent and detailed and can definitely keep up with the footage from the Action 4 and the Hero 12. But there is one downside to reframing. You have to edit each 360 shot in the smartphone or desktop app before you can use and share it. Insta360 has greatly improved the app and added a variety of AI-powered features to speed up and simplify the reframing process. But more on that later. The X4 has another advantage over the two traditional action cameras. The selfie stick is automatically removed from the shot. You don't have to do anything. The invisible selfie stick effect is a typical effect of 360 cameras. The effect is possible because the two lenses of the 360 camera capture an overlapping image. To offer something similar, the Action 4 also offers the option of removing the selfie stick from the shot. However, this involves a subsequent editing of the recordings, as if you were to remove an object from an image in Photoshop. This creates artifacts and it is sometimes possible to see that something has been removed. In addition, the effect is only available via the app and only in a reduced resolution. In combination, reframing and invisible selfie stick effect are the great strength of a 360 camera compared to traditional action cameras. This is because they enable shots that would simply not be possible in this form with a classic action camera. As I said, the special thing about the X4 is that this is now also possible in high resolution and a very good image quality. So anyone who is creative and likes to try out new shooting angles will enjoy the X4 and will no longer have to do without high resolution and great image quality. And the X4 has another decisive advantage over the Action 4 and the Hero 12. It has by far the widest field of view of all three cameras. Both the Hero 12 and the Action 4 offer different settings for the field of view. The Action 4 has a slightly wider field of view than the Hero 12, while the Hero 12 offers the Max Lens Mod, an accessory that increases the field of view. But regardless of the setting and accessory, the field of view of the X4 is significantly wider. Even if you wouldn't think so, all the shots in this comparison were taken with the same pole and therefore from the same distance. Especially on an action camera, I think a very wide field of view is a very important advantage. It enables a particularly immersive look, as if you were in the middle of the action. And if you are filming yourself, for example with a pole, it is also much easier to get yourself completely in the frame. A wider field of view is also an advantage for POV shots. It's much easier to get for example the skis and the horizon or the bike, the road and the horizon in the same frame. These three advantages clearly speak in favor of the X4, especially because as I said, the X4 now also offers these advantages in a high resolution. However, resolution is not everything when it comes to image quality. The important question is therefore whether the X4 can really keep up with the Action 4 and the Hero 12 in terms of image quality. In a direct comparison, you can see that all three cameras produce very nice colors. However, the look of the shots from these three cameras is very different. 
different, and it is ultimately a matter of taste as to which look you like best. Apart from the very different feel of view, which is obviously the biggest difference, you can see that the Action 4 and also the Hero 12 produce more contrasty images. The X4 usually exposes the footage brighter than the other two cameras, which sometimes leads to highlights burning out a little more quickly. The Action 4 in particular also has a very special look. Its colors are very cinematic, and the footage may look a bit cooler than the footage from the other two cameras, whose footage looks a bit more natural in the default settings. Personally, I like the look of the Action 4, but unlike the other two cameras, the Action 4 does not offer a natural color profile. However, just like the Hero 12, the Action 4 offers a 10-bit log profile, which also allows for heavy color grading. The X4 offers a flat color profile, but no real log profile for intensive color grading. I would also say that the Action 4 and Hero 12 footage looks a little more detailed and sharper than the footage from the X4. Of course, this is also due to the higher resolution, even though the X4 produces very detailed images, you can see the difference between 2.7K and 4K, especially on a large monitor. It should be said that you can adjust the sharpness on all three cameras. I have the impression that the X4 can keep up relatively well with the Hero 12 in terms of dynamic range. The dynamic range is similarly good, the highlights are well protected and the details in the dark areas of the image are similarly well preserved. A direct comparison is not easy, as the X4 has to find the optimum exposure for the entire 360 field of view, and as already mentioned, this may also be why the X4 often tends to expose the image brighter. However, the Action 4 has the best dynamic range in this comparison, as it protects the highlights slightly better than the other two cameras, and can also preserve a lot of detail in the dark areas. But unlike the Action 4, the Hero 12 and the X4 have their own HDR mode for difficult shooting situations. I have to say that I like the HDR mode of the Hero 12 a little better. The shots have a little less image noise and look a little more natural than with the X4. But as you can see, the main difference between these shots lies less in the colors, dynamic range or details, but rather in the different field of view and the differences in exposure. And here, of course, only you can decide for yourself what you personally like better and what is more suitable for your purposes. The shots we have seen of the X4 so far were all reframed 360 shots. However, the X4 also has a single lens mode. In this mode, the X4 only shoots with one of the two lenses. You therefore do not need to reframe the shot. In single lens mode, however, there is no invisible selfie stick effect and the camera behaves like a traditional action camera. In this mode, you can shoot in 4K at up to 60 frames per second. With the X4, you actually get two cameras in one body, a 360 camera and a camera that you can use like a conventional action camera and with which you can shoot in 4K. And especially in good lighting conditions, the single lens shots have a good and comparable image quality. Interestingly, as you can see, the X4, even in single lens mode, has the widest field of view of the three cameras. It's of course a great advantage to have this mode if you are casually want to take a shot that you want to share immediately without having to edit it. In my opinion, however, the great strength of the X4 lies in the 360 shots. As all three cameras are actually action cameras, they are not specifically designed for shooting in low light conditions. Nevertheless, it is of course an advantage if you can occasionally take a shot indoors or in the evening in a reasonable quality. And surprisingly, I would say that in a direct comparison, the X4 performs better in low light than the GoPro Hero 12. The stabilization on the GoPro no longer works particularly well in low light conditions. This is because the GoPro uses a slower shutter speed in low light. The images from the X4 are not only much more stable, they also look cleaner and have better colors. The Action 4 has a relatively large sensor, which is of course an advantage when shooting in low light. Nevertheless, the image stabilization of the Action 4 in low light is also significantly worse than that of the X4. The Action 4's shots in low light look slightly brighter than those of the Hero 12, but not necessarily better than those of the X4. I have to admit, this result is a bit surprising for me. Insta360 did a really good job. It has to be said, however, that you should do without the high resolution of 8K on the X4 in low light. That's why the X4 shots here were taken at 5.7K. Where the X4 can't quite keep up with the other two cameras is when it comes to slow motion recordings. Both the Action 4 and the Hero 12 are capable of shooting in 4K at 120 frames per second. They are therefore capable of producing high resolution slow motion shots. For a comparable image quality, you have to shoot in 8K with the X4, but this is only possible at up to 30 frames per second. Slow motion recordings are therefore not possible in 8K. 
in 5.7K, the X4 is able to shoot at up to 60 frames per second. The recordings in 5.7K look good, but of course do not quite come close to the quality of the recordings in 8K. For 100 frames per second, you have to reduce the resolution even further to 4K, and since you still have to reframe the shots, the result is a video in a very reduced resolution. As you can see here, the slow motion recordings of the X4 look quite usable. However, the Action 4 and Hero 12 shots look visibly better. But the X4 has another important strength compared to the other two action cameras. It has by far the best image stabilization, and I think few people are aware of that. You can see here in direct comparison that the X4 stabilizes the image visibly better than the GoPro Hero 12. And even if there are small differences in stabilization between the GoPro and the Action 4, this also applies to the comparison with the DJI Action 4. The Action 4 can't keep up with the X4 in terms of stabilization either. Of course, this is also due to the extremely wide wide field of view of the X4. All three cameras offer a horizon lock. This keeps the horizon straight no matter how you turn the camera. However, while the horizon lock on the Action 4 and the Hero 12 leads to a strong crop of the image, this is not the case with the X4. And this is also an important advantage for an action camera. Probably also to enable the high resolution and the many new features, the Insta360 X4 has a relatively large body. It is visibly larger than the body of the Hero 12 or the Action 4, whereby the Action 4 is slightly smaller than the Hero 12, at least without the frame. You can see a direct comparison here. The protruding lenses are also a weak point of the the X4, as they can be damaged relatively easily. Insta360 therefore supplies the X4 in the standard packaging with two lens guards, which can be screwed onto the lens relatively easily and can also be removed again quickly if necessary. At around 200 grams, the X4 weighs around 50 grams more than the other two cameras. A larger form factor and higher weight are of course a disadvantage for an action camera. After all, you often want to attach the action camera to your body and especially if you attach the camera to your helmet, you will feel the 50 gram difference. The elongated form factor of the X4 is also not ideal for attaching it to a helmet for example. And that brings us to the mount. The Action 4 comes with a magnetic mount and is compatible with all GoPro mounts. The Hero 12 has two integrated fingers, but you always have to use the GoPro screws to attach it. In contrast, the X4 has a 1 quarter inch fret on the underside. This makes sense, as you should normally mount a 360 camera like the X4 in a straight position. Only if you mount it straight on a pole can the selfie stick be removed from the shot. Personally, I think that the X4 is therefore particularly well suited to use in combination with a pole or a selfie stick. Insta360 also offers a variety of mounts for all kinds of activities and sports. In any case, there is no lack of mounts. However, if you usually want to attach your action camera to a helmet or chest mount, then a traditional action camera is probably the better choice. All three cameras are waterproof up to 10 meters without an additional diving case. However, you should know that a 360 camera can only take 360 shots underwater with a special dive case. This means that you can also use the X4 underwater without a dive case, but only in single lens mode. However, Insta360 offers a so-called invisible dive case for the X4 with which you can also benefit from the invisible selfie stick effect underwater and take cool 360 shots. However, the handling for underwater shots is somewhat easier overall with the Action 4 or the Hero 12. The slightly larger form factor of the X4 is a disadvantage, but it allows for a relatively large battery and a relatively long battery life. In 5.7K30, the X4 shoots for 2 hours and 21 minutes until the battery runs out. In comparison, the Hero 12 shoots in 4K30 for 1 hour and 42 minutes, the Action 4 for 1 hour and 46 minutes. Here in the office, at 22 degrees Celsius and without airstream, both the Action 4 and the Hero 12 when shooting at higher frame rates, for example at 4K60, overheat after a certain time and switch off. The X4, even in 8K30, records until the battery is empty. In 8K30, it shoots for around 1 hour and 15 minutes. There are therefore no overheating problems, at least not at 22 degrees Celsius. It remains to be seen what the situation will be like in summer at more than 30 degrees Celsius. For better audio quality, you should use an external microphone with all three cameras. However, the Hero 12 requires the media mod to connect an external microphone. The DJI Action 4 has an advantage in this regard, as it can easily be connected to the DJI Mic 2 via Bluetooth. As far as the internal microphones are concerned, I think that the Action 4 and also the Hero 12 sound slightly better than the X4. 
The Action 4 is a very good action camera. It can take great shots and has an interesting look. However, it doesn't offer many additional features. In addition to the usual shooting modes, the Hero 12 also has a few creative shooting modes such as star trails, light painting or vehicle lights. You can schedule a shot and with Super Photo, there is also a special photo format. In comparison, the X4 offers significantly more features. You cannot only control it with your voice. With gesture control, you can also start and stop a recording or take a photo with gestures. In Mi mode, the camera automatically keeps the subject in the center of the frame, no matter how you hold the camera. You no longer need to reframe the shot and can share it immediately. Since in Mi mode a shot is taken with both lenses, there is also the invisible selfie stick effect. Ideal for all those who want to vlog with the X4. With bullet time, you can create a very special effect by rotating the camera on its own axis using a dedicated accessory. And with the AI Highlights Assistant, the camera recognizes subjects in the image during the recording and automatically automatically saves important moments. These so-called highlights are then used to automatically create clips from your best shots. And I think that the Insta360 app is another great strength of the X4 compared to the other two cameras. The auto edit feature, which allows you to automatically create a clip from multiple shots, is completely free and also offers more features than the competition. The Insta360 app also offers various options for editing and reframing your 360 recordings quickly and easily with the help of AI. With the quick feature, for example, you can set the correct framing by moving your smartphone. You can also select and drag subjects, which makes reframing much easier. The app also offers a complete editing tool and a variety of special effects that you can use to enhance your videos. For example, you can quickly and easily replace the sky or simulate a drone shot. Two high resolution sensors, 8K, lots of features. Of course, this comes at a price. In a direct comparison, the X4 is the most expensive of the three cameras. The X4 currently costs $500. It is also available in various bundles. The Hero 12 costs $400 and the Action 4 only $300. You can find links to all three cameras in the video description. Check them out because they are frequent deals and prices can change quickly. So what would I recommend? Personally, I think that the X4 can definitely be a game changer in the action camera market. Finally, there are very high resolution 360 videos that you can reframe and that offer an invisible selfie stick effect. Together with the extremely wide field of view, these are simply decisive advantages when it comes to capturing action. So if you can afford a higher price, I would go for the X4, especially if you mostly film with a pole. It's also fun to try out new shooting angles. If on the other hand, you are looking for an action camera that you mostly want to use on a chest mount or helmet and if the price also plays an important role for you, then I would probably go for the Action 4. On my channel, you can also find a detailed comparison between the X4 and the X3, which is now available at a lower price. You can find a link to that video in the video description. And I will also make a detailed tutorial on all the features of the X4. So give me a like as feedback if this video was interesting for you. Stay tuned and see you next time.